Hello and welcome back, golf fans. I'm Chris Durrell. I'm here for RotorPros.com to bring my weekly DFS PGA breakdown. This week we have the Honda Classic, and before we jump in, let's just talk a little bit of what we got going on over at RotorPros. So if you're not a member yet, make sure to get over to RotorPros.com. Um, you can find all of our articles, videos, links uh, on the main page here. And if you're looking for a free trial, want to see what we're all about, definitely go up to the top right-hand corner. Click the sign up button and you're going to get, uh, with a weekly subscription, you're going to get a three-day trial. And with a monthly subscription or yearly subscription, you're going to get a seven-day free trial to come in, see what we're all about. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, PGA, MLB coming up. We cover soccer. Um, so we pretty much cover all the DFS sports out there. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching um, through our community chat. This is, um, we've got a bunch of different channels set up, this for PGA. Um, I share quotes, stats, any kind of trends um, when it comes from my cheat sheet, anything like that throughout the week, answering questions. Uh, like I said, one-on-one -on -one coaching, whether you're looking for um, choosing between players, whether you're looking for a course breakdown, whether you're looking for strategy for GPPs, pretty much anything, we got you covered. Rotopros.com, come get your free trial today. Pretty sure you're going to stick around with us. All right, so let's get started here. Um, this week we've got the Honda Classic. It's at PGA National Champions course. Um, it's going to kick off the Florida Swing this week. A little bit weaker field than usual just because um, the, the events got changed. The scheduling got changed a little bit. So the Honda Classic actually got sandwiched between the WGC event last week and then we've got also got next week's Arnold Palmer Invitational as well. So a um, little bit weaker field, but it is pretty strong at the top. We've got Justin Thomas, number three in the world, Brooks Kopka, number four in the world, and Cam, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, Ricky Fowler um, at number nine in the world there as well. So um, pretty strong at the top. So probably going to lead to a lot of stars and scrubs. You can probably see those three players pretty popular here this week, and there are some nice value options. We're going to go over those. First of all, let's go over the course. So it's a PGA National Champions course, like I talked about. It's a par 70, 7,140 yards. We've got Bermuda greens this week, so we're back to Bermuda out of that POA. Um, so, you know, we're going to look at some players, break down some players that are a little bit better on Bermuda than POA. And then uh, there's water in play. That's the big defense of this course. Uh, two defenses on this course. The big one is water. It comes into play on 14 of the 18 holes. The other defense is going to be wind. Um, this week we're going to look at the weather forecast here just shortly. But uh, the weather looks to be a little bit. We'll go back and look at some historic conditions here through Fantasy National Golf Club. Um, I do this in my research process each and every week just to kind of go and see what it's been like the last few years when it comes to conditions. Um, so as you can see, pretty consistent that the scoring relative to par is going to be difficult. Um, we've got windy pretty much all through each and every round over the last three, four years. So the big surprise here this year, looking at the weather here, we've got Thursday and Friday's weather forecast, super forecast up on windfinder.com. Looking at that Palm Beach Gardens area, we've got, uh, you know, temperatures in the mid 70s to low 80s so great temperatures and no wind as you can see um, looking really good on the wind front uh, saturday sunday looks like you know we're probably gonna get some winds in the 12 to 15 mile an hour range for a few hours there in the afternoons but nothing serious so when breaking down you know um your, your players looking for a strategy for weather this week i don't think there's gonna be one i'll check back here again tonight but just from looking at this here not going to be uh doing any strategical uh, lineups um going off the weather so Historically, looking at the last five years winning scores, um, so Justin Thomas won last year, minus eight, Ricky Fowler, minus 12. We've got Adam Scott, minus nine, Padraig Harrington, minus six, and Russell Henley, minus eight. So as you can see, single digits has been the norm around here for winning scores. This year, I think we're more in that 2017 range, minus 12 to minus 15 if there's going to be no wind. Um, so I'm looking a little bit more at that birdie or better percentage versus, you know, your bogey avoidance and stuff like that because I think there's going to be a little bit more scoring here this year. So it's, it's famous for a three-hole stretch in the back nine called the Bear Trap. So we've got uh, the 15th is a par 3, 179 yards. 16th is a par 4, 434 yards. 17th is a par 3, 190 yards. Um, we're just going to go look at those holes here real quick so you look at the 15th par 3 you're shooting over water the entire time unless you're bailing out to the left here um, to get onto the green so that makes it a lot very difficult it's just the amount of water that's there it's a 180 yard approach shot so it's kind of on the longer end of approaches but uh, the big thing is that water so there is a bunker on the back that will save those balls that you know roll through the green but uh, very difficult hole 
16th, as you can see, uh, it's a par four. It's, it's not that long, but we golfers are going to want everything, um, as they talk about here in the description, everything slopes towards the water. The fairway slopes towards the water. This bunker here is fairly new, um, catching those balls that are rolling towards the water. So golfers are going to want to be somewhere in this range on their drives. And then what they're going to want to do is avoid, again, they're going over water, coming to this big green here, a lot of roll off on the back. So you're going to see a lot of balls just to make sure that they get it there to the green, a lot of balls over the back. Um, but it is a fairly big green here. So, but the water again makes it very difficult. And then we jump to the 17th, the end of the bear trap here, another hole right over water, 175 yards. So kind of just like the other one, we've got a bunker on the back to save some of those balls. If you go deep on this one, um, you know, looking for players to bail out. So that's just a look at uh, the bear trap there. So um, that doesn't even cover, that just covers two of the par threes. The other two par threes in this course are over 215 yards, so that adds um, some difficulty to it. And then five of the 12 par fours are over 450 yards this week, um, with the par four tenth being 508 yards. So um, very difficult course, routinely, uh, I mean, consistently is ranked among the top 10 hardest courses on tour. I believe it was the number two hardest last year. Um, there was some wins, so I think it falls. It's probably still going to be in that top 10 just with the amount of water on the course. Um, but that's definitely something we're looking at. So for stats this week, I'm definitely looking at ball striking um, with emphasis on approach and looking at just quotes. Uh, Rory McIlroy has been a regular here at this event. He's not here this year, um, but looking at some of his quotes, one that I shared, and this is from Future of Fantasy Golf and Act. So you can go and choose whatever tournament each and every week. Um, he's got a course breakdown on there as well as um, some trends to, to look forward to, like Bermuda Greens, uh, Florida courses, things like that. And then he's got a whole bunch of quotes from players over the years. And one from Rory that really stood out to me was uh, just asking him what it takes to do well here because um, it's usually windy. And you get down here through this. Uh, you want to play out of the fairway and you want to hit greens. It's a ball strikers golf course. Um, so definitely you want to be hitting fairways and you want to be hitting greens. If you're not hitting greens, you're probably hitting the water and putting up big numbers. So bogey avoidance is baked in a little bit into my model this week just because those players that avoid the most bogeys obviously are going to have more success. Um, you can have a ton of birdies, but if you're putting the ball in the water on the other holes, uh, you're, you know your score is going to be closer to even than it is to be that uh, minus 10 mark, uh, what it's going to take probably in that area to win. So make sure to check out Future of Fantasy Golf and Act um, right here. This is what the page for the Honda Classic looks like. So we've got a lot of breakdowns here. So if you want to see guys that are maybe better in Bermuda Greens, he's got that tracked here as well, looking at uh, those trends uh, since 2014 on Bermuda Greens. Be sure to go check that out. Um, looking at the course breakdown at Fantasy National, um, just want to go down. As you can see, uh, players in the top 10, strokes gain approach is huge. Ball striking is very huge. Par 4 scoring over par 5. And then uh, hole composition, like I already mentioned here, five of the par fours are over 450 yards. And then looking at the approach shot distribution, which is another one that I really like to use, um, we've got a lot of uh, long approaches coming in. That has to do with um, guys, you know, maybe putting the putting the driver in the bag and using uh, irons or three woods off the tees, five woods off the tees, just to get that ball in the fairway. Because you know how I mentioned, uh, very important to get the ball in the fairway. So a lot of guys are going to be putting the driver away this week. So you can't really overpower this course um, or you're going to end up uh, putting up some big numbers with that water. So with that less than driver um, game plan that a lot of players are going to have, you're going to have some long approaches. So make sure to look for guys that are, uh, when looking at that strokes gained approach statistic, look for guys that have that proximity from you know 175 to 200 and 200 plus yards. All right, a couple other things here that you can use for research each and every week. Um, you know about the the cheat sheet that I do every week and I share. Um, another one is the PGA salary trend sheet. So I've got every salary going back to the Safeway Open starting this year. Up top here is just your official world golf ranking average. So obviously lower number, stronger the field. And then it just kind of looks at every single player and their salary on FanDuel and DraftKings. And then this here is their plus minus from last event. So what you can see, with this event specifically is that all the players 7500 and up on DraftKings have all seen a price increase this week so there's not a lot of players um, trending down so it makes roster construction a little bit tougher but uh, that's definitely what I'm here to help you out with that and that is what the community slack chat is for to help you out with that sort of stuff um, when doing roster construction um, on Wednesday and into Wednesday night before lineup lock on Thursday morning the other sheet 
that I have is a DFS or sorry DraftKings points trend. So what I'm looking at here is going same thing tournament by tournament, um, listing the DraftKings points that they got during those tournaments. I don't have FanDuel; it's just a little bit harder to get that data from FanDuel. So that's something that's in the mix in the future here. But for now, we've got DraftKings point trend. Um, you can go tournament by tournament, or you can just go by their last one, two, three, four, five, up to ten. Uh, tournaments here. So something else that I added here this week, uh, I've sorted by season average, so as you can see Justin Thomas right near the top, is how many times the players had over 100 DraftKings points and how many times the players had over 80 DraftKings points, just so you can see who the consistent players are when you're looking at fantasy scoring or maybe deciding between is this guy a cash player or is this guy a GPP play. Just another research tool to, be, to go and uh, check that kind of stuff out. So with that, we're going to jump in. We're just going to have a look at uh, a couple of my core plays here this week. And if you've got questions, make sure to jump into the community chat, comment in the section below here on this video, or hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. So right off the top, Justin Thomas. He's number two in my model. He's the most expensive golfer on both uh, sites this week. Going back to the points trend sheet here, he is second to Justin Rose in average fantasy scoring for the season now he's also played four more events than than rose and he has hit the 100 point mark five times in his seven events and seven times he's hit over 80 um, so each and every time he's hit over 80 very consistent so it's a very high floor for justin thomas and he's got a ton of upside there as well and then uh, going back to the cheat sheet here just looking at his stats of course he stands out the odds, I don't think, he's not someone I'm going to be putting a outright bet on. I just don't like putting bets on guys that are like 5-1 to one in the field. Um, I would rather go down and search for guys in the 20-40 to you know 40 range. I'll talk about that a little bit as well uh, as we move forward. So looking at some of the course history, like I said, Thomas won this event last year. He's been up and down. Um, he's missed the cut twice, but he's got a win here last year, and he's got a third place in 2016, so the upside is definitely there. He comes in with tremendous form. Um, we're just going to go over and look at Fantasy National here a little bit. We're going to click on Justin Thomas, have a look at his profile. He hasn't been too terribly owned lately. Um, he is a little bit better on pose, you can see here. But uh, looking at his last turns, I mean, he's gaining strokes on the approach just like every single week. Um, so definitely looking at that. When his putting is on, he's got that winning upside. Um, like last week, for instance, he lost three strokes putting at the WGC GC Mexico, two rounds over par, and still finished top ten. Just his approaches, um, tee to green game is just amazing. So he's the elite, elite player in that top tier that I'm looking at this week. Going down a bit more from a cash game perspective, number one in my model is Webb Simpson. Um, he comes in, he's been very consistent as well. He got a top five here last year. He's number two in strokes gain approach. He His off the tee numbers are down a little bit just because he doesn't have that distance game. Not really worried about that this week. 17th in uh, strokes gain ball striking on my sheet and just to go over that here just a quick little note is those stats are 85 percent this year's stats and then 15 percent uh last year's stats for those players that played a full season last year as well I like to bake in a little bit of that just to get a little bit larger sample size of those stats so he's second in par four scoring on this sheet he's 23rd in birdie or better percentage and second in bogey avoidance so if you're looking for a uh, top tier play to build your cash games around it's webb simpson for the me this week and then to pivot off of him um, for gpps i'm going to be looking at gary woodland i think webb's going to be a little bit uh, um, higher owned um, but i'm definitely looking at woodland he finished second runner up here in 2017 two not great starts in 2018 and 2016 did make the cut in those but uh, T49 last year and T61 in 2016, not great. But I think some he may be a little bit lower owned and makes a good pivot off of Webb Simpson. Going down a little bit into the mid-range, I'm looking at uh, JD Post on, number five in my overall model this week. He's been here once, T27 in 2017, but he comes in, he's been very consistent, and we are going to look at that here real quick as well. So over his last 50 rounds, we're going to actually sort that by the last 24 rounds is what I like to use on Fantasy National. Um, he's 8th, uh, not really looking at short game. So his ball striking's been down a little bit. He's 60th in strokes game ball striking over that last 24 rounds, 44th in strokes game approach. The biggest thing with that ball striking has been his off the tee, but if we go and have a look at his uh, fairways gained, is kind of what we're looking at so he's been a little bit down there uh, 76th in fairways gained um, but 
when he does miss the fairway, he hit, is hitting the greens in regulation, so that's really good to see there. He's had some success here, and he's been consistent lately. Um, just want to go look at his last few tournaments here. T28 at the Genesis, Genesis, T26 at the Waste Management Phoenix Open, T40 at the Farmers, T7 at the Desert Classic, and T20 at the Sony. So that's going back. That's all of 2019. He's made all cuts and finished inside the top 30 in four of those five events. Um, so he's been really consistent. The upside isn't really there, but he's someone I'll be looking at uh, building my cash games around, get fit in one of those mid-range guys. And then someone that I like even better, even though he's a little bit lower ranked in my model, is Scott Piercy. Um, he's 55 to 1 to win this week. He's only 8,100 on DraftKings. Um, a little more expensive on FanDuel at 10,000. Finished T17 here last year. Missed the cut in 2016. T31 in 2015. So that's kind of the range I'm looking for is that um, for top, top 20 out of Scott Piercy this week. Probably end up betting that top 20. He's got top 20 in two, his last two starts. Um, we'll go look at him real quick here as well. So he's 15th in strokes and ball striking over the last 24 rounds, 19th in approach. Um, short games kind of sucked, not really worried about that a whole bunch. Because, um, like I said, if you're not hitting greens, you're going to be in the water. So you're going to be putting up those big numbers. But he's been very consistent um, since the start of this season. You can see he, he kind of struggled down the stretch a little bit last year. He missed the cut at the Safeway Open to open the fall wraparound portion of the season. And since then, he's made every single cut. He's got three top 10s, four top 10s in there as well, and top 25s galore. So definitely looking at Scott Pierce this week as a core play for me in cash games, especially on DraftKings, more of a GPP play on FanDuel at 10,000. CT Pan, um, I opened up thinking he's going to be more of a cash play for me this week. His stats have been pretty terrible lately. He's still been consistent in making cuts despite those terrible stats. So um, I think that gives him upside. We've seen his upside. He's finished... T17 here last year after T37 in his first trip in 2017. And if he starts hitting more greens, hitting more fairways, gets his ball striking numbers back to where um, they were, you know, maybe a little bit earlier in the season, even a little bit last year, I think these these finishes here that we see, like T51, T66, T60, T44, start becoming in the T30s, and uh, top 30s, and top 20s as well. I think he's got that upside there as well. So at 7,800 on DraftKings, 8,600 on FanDuel. He's going to be a play that I will be using in GPP formats this week. Talked about Jason Kokrak quite a bit this year. He's number 15 in my model. His price, actually going and looking at um, the salary trend sheet, which I don't have up here. His price, is, he's one of the few um, 7,000 plus players on DraftKings. I've seen his price go down a little bit. So definitely looking at him on DraftKings at 7,300. As you can see, he's only 60 to 1, which are the best odds of anyone in this range. There's some 80s and there's some 70s, but he's at 60 to 1. Um, 110 in the world. Um, over his last five events, he's averaging 82 DraftKings points per event, which, again, leads everyone in this range. So I'm definitely looking at that. He hasn't played here the last two years. He missed the cut the two years before that. He does have a T41 back in 2014. Not really worried about that course history because he hasn't played here in three years. Um, maybe not one of his best courses, but he's been extremely consistent lately. And someone... Um, that I'm definitely looking at stands out in my stats model. He's number three in strokes gained ball striking, sixth in strokes gained approach, 12th in DraftKings scoring. Um, we'll go look at uh, par four efficiency here real quick. Seventh in par four scoring and ninth when looking at that 450 to 500 yard range. So um, definitely like Jason Kokrak, like I said, on DraftKings, even on FanDuel at 9,400, he's someone that I will use as a core play and will probably make the cut in my... Uh, cash game lineup this week so a couple players down at the low end we'll finish off with here um nick watney never totally feel comfortable rostering nick watney but uh at 6900 this week on DraftKings, 8800 on fanduel i think it makes a lot of sense he's another player that's seen his price go down number 28 in my overall model and 125 to 1 to win and you're looking at that uh, sub 7k range that kind of leads everyone in that range hasn't been terrific when it goes to DraftKings scoring lately 67 points um, per event over his last five events. You know, he's been a little bit up and down making cuts. We'll go look at him real quick here on Fantasy National. 34th in ball striking, so not bad. 38th in approach. He struggled with his short game and around the green. Um, like I said, not really a big factor this week. 
going and looking at his par four numbers here lately. Not great, 119th. Um, so he has struggled a little bit when it comes to par fours. So that, you know, it's a little bit of an alarm, alarm bell start going off with that, but he's been super consistent. He makes up for it on the par fives, um, even though there are less of those this week. I think he can make up some strokes there. And then uh, I want to have a quick look at his, uh, yeah, he hasn't been gaining a ton of fairways. So I really want to use him in casters because of the price. He looks more like a GPP play, but he does come back. He's been very comfortable here in Florida. Um, on the Bermuda greens and he's look at his tracker his course history over the last five years t33 t14 t41 t24 at 6900 on DraftKings 8800 on FanDuel I will take that all day I think he's a player that we can feel safe with who's comfortable here when it comes to the course history side of things that is going to be consistent and at least make the cut and if he gets a, a t41 this week at that price I think that makes sense in cash games I think that's pretty much all we can need uh, all we need um, whereas he gets up in that uh, top 20 range, he starts making himself uh, a nice name for a GPP play as well. Another cash game play, if you're looking to go a little bit more stars and scrubs, because some of those players, you know, like I talked about, the prices have gone up on those upper tier players this week, almost every single one of them um, up quite a bit, you know, um, 200 to 1,000, some, some of them 1,500. If you need some cheap plays for cash games to fit two of those in our lineups this week, Stuart Sink definitely stands out. He's made the cut here in five straight years. Um, as you can see, sandwiched in the middle here, he's got uh, T31 or better in three of those five and T60 or better in all of those. Um, he's another player that, you know, looking at the stats model, he had maybe not hitting those, those fairways um, like we'd want to see. But the ball striking, you know, it's been down a little bit lately, but he does get there. Um, normally he's going to be that consistent player You're just going back and looking at his last few events here just to see where that ball striking has failed as a lot of it is the approach shot he's lost uh, the the events that are tracked he's lost strokes on the approach in four of his last five events a little bit off the tee at the waste management phoenix open in his last start it was pretty bad there but uh, at his price and his experience here at this course i think at 6,800 on DraftKings especially, that he makes a good uh, start and scrubs cash play. Not really a ton of upside, so I'm not really looking to use him in GBPs as like a punt play in that range, but uh, you know, more of, like I said, uh, a, a cash play. And if you were to fit Watney and Sink in a cash lineup, you would definitely be able to go up and grab like a Justin Thomas if you wanted, and then like someone in the 8K range, uh, and still feel fairly comfortable that uh, you'd be able to get six of six through. And even if you only get five of six through, just because there's going to be some big numbers this week, I think we're definitely going to see some five of the six cash game lineups um, get through to the weekend and uh, see some green screens this week. So that covers uh, some of my core plays. Like I said, if you've got any questions, definitely hit me up in the Rotor Pros community Slack chat, whether either in the PGA Talk private message or in the main members chat. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. Or you can leave a comment in uh, below here in the video comment section, and I will definitely get back to you there. Um, thanks for watching the video, and let's see some green screens this week, everyone. Cheers.